All right, give it up for the Glen Lake Laker Marching Band, our in-studio band for week six of Hometown Highlights. And entering tonight, three teams had a strong say in who would be Lake Michigan Conference champion. That would be Grayling, Elk Rapids, and Boyne City. All entered this evening 4-1 and one overall and 2-0 and oh in the conference. At least one of those teams would suffer a loss tonight, though, when the Vikings hosted the Elks. Still some brave fans making it out to the stands tonight. A lot of umbrellas, though. Bands were still ready to go. They had a lot of heavy band gear on. I don't know how much. Uh, these guys look pretty well clothed as well in the studio. Grayling, second drive of the game. Jake Swander hands off to Michael Branch for the score. Pretty much all Swander after that, though. Here he is with the QB carry to the corner. And just like that, 14 to nothing. And Swander wasn't done. Goes through the air. Finds Tyler McClanahan. This guy makes plays all over the field. And he dives over the... End zone to make it 21 nothing for the home team. Elks needed something. Tice Graves usually is that spark. He brings this one down near the 20. Takes about a truckload of defenders to bring him down. Adam Troutman, number three, finishes it off. You can see him in the far left there. Jumps into the screen, makes it 21 to 7 at that point, but Swander to McClanahan again. And Grayling in a route by 20. 48 to 28, the final. Medical staff was on hand, but that was more for cheering on the home team than anybody actually needing to be hospitalized. The Highland Conference likely to be decided next week when undefeated Lake City hosts Beale City. 4-1 McVay and visiting the Trojans tonight puts them to the test really first. Let's see what happens. Start of the second, McVay and Zachary Steven handed the ball, takes it, and takes a lot of Trojans to bring him, ball, to bring him down. Ball over to Lake City now. Drew Marion, pretty spectacular QB, goes long. Dylan Allard is there for the beautiful catch, 11 yards. Marion will throw again. Kevin Kunkel is the recipient for the score. And just like that, Lake City up 13 nothing. Staying with the Trojans, it's Marion again, who looks and finds Lucas Marion. Are they related? We don't know, hopefully. And uh, they move further down the field. Eventually, Marion punches it in himself with a QB carry. Lake City goes on to win in dramatic fashion tonight, the final 46 to nothing. Let's head over to Spencer. Well, Glen Lake started last season 8-0 before suffering a loss in Week 9 to North Muskegon. The Lakers off to another dominant start. we got the band in-house tonight. They can, all, they can attest to that. Already 5-0 and and in sole lead of the Northwest Conference. I'll take you to the action tonight. It was homecoming. It was always a beautiful oh, night, fall high school, school homecoming. Go. Lakers, first possession of the second half. Trevor Apsey, 51 yards for this kid. is uh, it's, it's normal. He takes the rock and he does just that. Makes one guy miss there and then puts on the Jets. 51 yards for it's the score. It's a long 51 yards. He takes a, his time. He does. <laughs> he, he works some magic there, makes a couple guys miss. Bam loves it in here. Lakers driving again. Travis Whittier puts pretty much the entire Panther team on his back. It's about the toughest 12 yards you're ever going to see. Ooh, yeah. And that's what you get when you keep the legs turning. He must work out in the uh, gym a lot. Uh, quite a bit. <laughs> and then that leads to this, a 34-yard field goal from Henrik Orr. This kid plays soccer for Leland. He kicks for the Lakers. And Glen Lake goes 6 to nothing with a shutout win over Frankfurt, 52 to nothing. St. Agnes traveling below the bridge, looking great this year after starting the season with a loss, visiting Forest Area tonight. A few minutes left in the game. St. Agnes with the Rock, Jr. Cole Thompson weaves through the line, fights off Forest Area's Landon Elliott and Paul Korn. Going to take Luke, Lucas Garcia, the whole slew of Warriors, to bring him down. Trying to move it again, they drop it, fumble on the play. Recovered by the Warriors, putting the power back in their hands with just under two minutes left to play. And it's Eric Kaiser for the Warriors, trying to make something happen here. It's a little bit downfield, James Gustafson and Lucas uh, Ryder and bring him down. Forest area, they play their hearts out tonight at home, but the Saints take the trip below the bridge, get the win, 49-7, to the final in this one. Uh, St. Ignis back to the norm for them in the Ski Valley. Cadillac looking for their fourth Big North Conference win, looking to stay perfect overall in Gaylord. Stephen Fitzek, though, is a Blue Devil, and he drops back and launches it to Colin Waters, puts him near the goal line. They'll try to punch it in here, but the Cadillac D just stuffs him. Storm. Don't try and mess with the Viking defense. They're on a roll this year. Next drive, Jalen Brooks. Spencer, have you heard of Jalen Brooks? I think everyone has. The kid yeah. does stuff like this. Oh, he is incredible and uh, didn't get a score there, but he did a lot of groundwork, and they're going to continue to move the ball. Brooks through the air. Patrick Briggs, hello. Huge gain. Finally, finally, Cadillac's going to get a TD in this highlight. I guarantee you. Nate Hook this time does the damage. So no Jalen Brooks needed there. Hook gets the score. Big battle for Caddy, who goes on to win in a shutout. But next Friday, they host the co-leader in the Big North, Traverse City West, Big at match. their place. Huge game.
Well, it doesn't get much more like football than that. A little jack jam for you to continue this Friday evening. Glen Lake Laker Marching Band in-house with us tonight to continue hometown highlights. Now, a year ago, Traverse City Central was on top of the Big North Conference, finishing the season 8-1 and, and picking off a uh, home playoff win as well. Great year for the Trojans. 2013, a little different story. 3-2 and two entering this week, and they have some work to do if they hope to return to that postseason. Tonight, their opponents, Petoskey, they're only at two wins of the Northmen, so they're also looking to create some momentum for the playoffs. And tonight in Petoskey, they're wearing pink for breast cancer awareness. We've seen several teams do something uh, like this throughout the month of October. Great. Great honor and uh, great privilege for the teams to do this, representing all month long. Kurtman, Northman's got Kurt Boucher. Handoff drive up the middle for TD territory. And Chase Lettingham is going to do the rest. Finds the opening on the right. Gets the ball into the end zone. But now we go to TC Central's offense, see what they can do. Sean Williams drops back, looks, finds my old high school classmates, younger brother Zach Egbert for the pass. That'll set this one up. And Williams does it again. He dropped back to lethal Ethan Campbell. Lethal. Spence, he, knew he was going to sneak in here somewhere. And he my just so favorite happened player. Save it for the end. It's his favorite, and he's a San Francis Gladiator alum, so that's saying a lot. Petoskey, though, they hold on for their third win of the year, 42-37 to 37 at their place. Spence, what do you got for us now? Well, believe it or not, another team on the bubble for the playoffs, Traverse City St. Francis. The pain of missing the postseason for the first time in over two decades last year still motivating the boys this fall. Their final three games are against some playoff-tested teams. Gladius celebrating a birthday tonight. It's homecoming for, oh, the, for the Gladiators. In the third, Raiders airing it out. Luke Klinger, he connects with his man out there, but uh, Michael Marsh says, give me that ball, son. It's fumbled, and the Glads back in business here in the third, already up 21-7 at this point. From the 14 yard, from 14 yards out, they give it to Mr. Byron Bulla. And that kid does what he does best. Punch him into the end zone. He's had the Michigan State next year. I'm sure you all remember the name. He probably Bulla. had a slice of cake after. Probably had, he deserved a slice of cake after this one. Charleboy not going away though. Klinger hits Ro Robbie Williams for a huge gain down the sidelines. And he's down inside the 10. But penalties pushing the Raiders back. This is from fourth and goal from forever. And they're trying to put something on the board, but Bulla's there again, breaking it up. SF, they win this one 49 to 7, staying alive, still hunting for the playoffs. Sutton's Bay looking for their third win tonight, hosting the Mesick Bulldogs, opening drive for the Norsemen. They give to the senior Jason Pease, and he punches it in from one yard out. PAT was actually blocked, so it's 6 0 Sutton's Bay at that point. Mesick trying to get on the offensive. Bulldogs feed Brad Harris up the middle, and he's rumbling and stumbling for a big game. Big gain, I should say, but then. Try to get the screen pass out in the flats, the wide receiver, the laterals dropped, and this is what they call a scoop and score. Lars Thornton takes it all the way back the distance, 81, got about 81 yards there. As was his number. As was his number, yeah. <laughs> and uh, Suns Bay gets the big win at home, 31 to nothing. Good work there by the Norsemen. Kingsley hoping to get back on track after a tough loss last week to Glen Lake. Annual breast cancer fundraiser game tonight at Benzie for Munson Mammography, the third year they've done that. Uh, another great thing that our team do in the air. First Kingsley possession, though, Dan Gellis, Mr. Gellis. He's Tip number seven. He goes 70 yards. It's 7 nothing Stags. What I'm saying is play the number seven <laughs> in your next lottery entry. Maybe not. Maybe if you're a Kingsley fan. First Benzie possession, handoff to Evan Mokan. Mokan is motoring. He goes 50 yards, then Mokan again from three yards out. He gets the score. We're tied at seven early on in Benzie. Next Kingsley possession, though, it's Gellis again. He's going to go 15 yards to the corner, dodges a couple of defenders, and he's seven. into the end zone. Seven, giving them seven. That's right, and they get a lot more than just the 14. They ended up 48-22 to 22 for their fourth yeah, win yeah. of the year. All right, well, that's going to do it for Spencer and myself. We're going to step off and let the real talents of the show finish it off right. That would be the Glen Lake Laker marching band one more time. Have a good weekend, everybody.